Okay, let's move on. Here's a very long back and forth between Destronia and just another tuber and a bunch of other people. But I'm not going to read through all this stuff. Maldora got in on it. Wow, look at this long comment thread. It's really involved. Well, it's good to see people having discussions on my videos. Anyway, um, but it, it's... Uh, the comment was by Destronia123, and uh, I, th I think that's a guy. Maybe it's a girl, though. I'm not sure. This is why you need to put your pronouns in your bio. Anyway, Destronia said that drawing perfectly captures Garbear's essence. Yeah, I took the retarded Wojak and I put some yellow hair on it. It, it turned out quite well. I'm quite proud of it. One of my great artistic achievements. All right. Uh, Chrisrus 1965 on Inmendum's idiocy said, Inmendum. Hmm, now that's a name I haven't heard in a very long time. I don't know if that's supposed to be a reference to Obi-Wan's words in Star Wars, like when he said... Obi-Wan, now there's a name I haven't heard in a long time. I don't think so, because it wouldn't make sense in this context. Anyway, you probably haven't heard of Inmendum for a long time, because you you probably only encountered Inmendum in um, replies or, or discussions between him and and Snake, right? Snake Pliskinist, a.k.a. Rizzle Dizzle, a.k.a. Your Lord and Savior, a.k.a. Raymond Wallace who is now like completely insane, just ranting all the time. He's gone totally psychotic. Basically has like Adderall-induced schizophrenia or something like that. But I knew he was insane, or at least I knew he was having a psychotic episode when he made that video, the crazy video that ended Snake Pliskinist as a channel. I was like, aha, that's psychosis right there. I know what that is. And uh, I tried to tell him many times over the years, but he would never listen to me. So he's now stuck in his crazy mind, his delusional world, pacing around and around in his apartment, ranting and raving. But whatever, it's a way of life. It's an ethos. <laughs> it's not really an ethos, but it's something. All right, uh, here's a comment by the goodly dragon on new theism. He said, science is the answer, though, to epistemology. Beyond saying the theory works well enough to consistently make predictions that come true, there really is nothing else you can have as a more solid foundation. That's as far as certainty goes. The meaning of life? Why think about it? There's no answer to that question that can actually be backed. Well, there's no answer to any question that can actually be backed, ultimately, including science. Um, the theory works well enough to consistently make predictions that come true is kind of bogus, because typically the predictions depend on the theory. They use the concepts of the theory. Uh, explanatory power is a little more, it's a little more subtle than just making predictions that come true. But uh, also, science is not an answer to epistemology. Science is science. It's a method for basically generating knowledge collaboratively. You know, people working together to explicitly create knowledge that can exist outside the human brain. Uh, although it doesn't entirely exist outside the human brain, but some of it is explicit. A lot of it is implicit, though. Kuhn pointed that out when he talked about paradigms, that the way that you learn a scientific theory is not just reading the, the text of it or whatever. You go through examples and, and, and you induce the underlying concepts and their meanings from these examples. And that was what paradigm initially was used to mean, the, the like examples that are used to um, propagate the underlying conceptual basis of the theory. But anyway, you can get into the philosophy of science, but that's epistemology. So 
No, it really isn't an answer to just say, well, we have science and it works, so we're done here. But that's really just a refusal to think. And as for why think about the meaning of life, well, why not think about it? I mean, you're going to think about it if you discover that you don't have uh, some kind of self-evident basis for value judgments. This is going to make you think about it. You can take for granted that you're doing the right thing, but once you start asking the question, what am I supposed to do with my life? You can't just pretend the question doesn't exist. Okay, uh, and then he said, I'm not saying that the new atheists have an answer to the foundations of their morality, which supposedly is based on harm reduction, but if you look further into things they support, like feminism, clearly isn't. But as far as the meaning of life is concerned, they pretty much answered that and got it right. The answer is that the question is absurd and nothing more. It's like when you divide by zero in math, you get the answer as undefined. Well, first of all, the new atheists don't say the question is absurd. They just take value for granted. You know, Pinker talks about human flourishing and human well-being. Um, you know, they talk about self-actualization, the pursuit of happiness, right? So they are implicitly hedonistic, but they have never thought about it. So they can't even articulate their value theory, but they have some kind of implicit value theory, and they refer to it when they make normative claims, which they do all the time, right? Like Pinker will make normative claims about what humanity should do, what our society should do. Well, he's got to have a basis for making those claims. So what is it? Well, it's some vague notion of human flourishing and happiness and improving human well-being or, or whatever. Right? So, no, these guys aren't philosophically deep, especially on questions of value. And it is a meaningful question to ask. But yes, philosophy has this property of being self-referential. So if you think you're going to find a foundation, then you're going to be disappointed. But at least you'll understand that you don't have a foundation. And it's from that point that you have to bootstrap yourself out of the abyss. So yeah, it's much easier to just stay in that comfortable frame where you take everything for granted. But you're just taking things for granted. You're not thinking about them. You're not questioning them. You're not critiquing them. You're blind to them. The philosophical questions are there whether or not you think about them, whether or not you are aware of them. Even if you try to dismiss them and hide them, they're still there in the background. And you'll have assumptions that will frame your thinking. And those assumptions will be unexamined. So the point of philosophy is you expand the frame, you bring the assumptions into awareness, but this creates a problem. It shows you that you don't have an ultimate foundation for your beliefs. And before you, you felt like you did because you took a bunch of things for granted and you never thought about them and you never questioned them so they felt like a foundation. You felt like you were standing on firm ground. But it was an illusion. Okay, let's move on. <laughs> Here is one by Jolly Crocodile on New Theism. He said, Go to church. People are slightly nicer, and they say they want to be good. Go to secular areas. People are neutral or hostile. Say they believe in nothing. Does anybody ever say that? This is such a ridiculous straw man. You know, <laughs> it's not like atheists go around saying, I believe in nothing. I don't think anybody says that. All right. Uh, well, maybe there are a few people who say that, but they're very, very rare. Anyway, then he said, well, looks like church wins. Why not be religious if it benefits you? Why not believe in God? So it's just another Pascal's wager. And then he said, but, but, but it's not real. True. In quotes. The fuck is real or true then? <laughs> All right. Um, then State of the Nile replied to him saying, 
uh, quoting him saying the fuck is real or true then, and then State of the Nile said, well, the fuck does it mean to benefit? What is good? This just seems like tactical nihilism. You can question the meaning of any term, but I would define truth as coherence to a model of experience. And I don't have a clean definition of real, but in this case, God would be real if he was what they claim him to be, a mind, independent consciousness, outside space-time, the creator of the universe, etc. Yeah, it, it is just tactical nihilism. It's like, well, I don't care about truth if it doesn't give me the answer I want. I, of course, take it for granted that I, I can make truth judgments like secular people believe in nothing, or religious people are nicer. I mean, like, that's a truth judgment, Jolly Crocodile. Do you not understand you're making truth judgments? Anyway, uh, let me see. I'm going to skip forward to my response to him. I said I've done fine as an atheist. I married an atheist and had atheist kids. I've never found religious people to be more cooperative than atheists. And of course you could make the same kind of fallacious appeal to consequences argument for leftism. Why not be leftist? What's the harm? Everyone else is doing it. Put the rainbow flag button on your backpack and drink the soy. That way you'll fit in with the corporate elites. But that's not an argument for leftism, is it? It might be an argument for pretending to be a leftist, but it's not an argument for leftism. All right, and then he said, If being an atheist works for you, go ahead, my man, but you are no closer to any truth because of it. Again, if you're right and nothing matters, why not pretend there is a god? Is the truth that there is no truth? It's pointless to argue about such things. <laughs> I mean, he just said there is no truth, right? Uh, anyway, I said, of course I'm closer to the truth by not believing in absurdities. That's how truth works. You can be wrong or you can be right. The less wrong you are, the more right you are. If I believed that a seven-headed pig made the universe, I'd be further from the truth about the universe. And then I quoted him saying, again, if you're right and nothing matters. And I said, did I ever say nothing matters? No, I've explicitly said many times that I value reproducing. Nothing matters objectively, but I'm not the universe. I value things subjectively. People really can't get over this hurdle, right? They really can't get over this thing that, yeah, there's no objective value, but you're, you're a subject. So there's value to you. And there's value to me. There is no value that exists independent of a mind, but you are a mind. <laughs> so value exists to you, okay? Anyway, then I quoted him saying, it's pointless to argue about such things. And I said you posted a comment attempting to argue about such things. All right, and then he said, categorically dismissing the possibility of God existing is in no way more logical slash rational than exploring the possibility that he does exist. So notice how the Moden bailey fallacy is being employed here. So like, it's not that the theist is claiming that God exists, making a positive claim that he would have to defend or whatever. It's that the atheist is categorically dismissing the possibility of God while the theist is merely exploring the possibility that God exists, right? So he's trying to like, um, he's trying to back off into tactical nihilism, right? He's saying, well, I'm not really a believer. I'm just exploring the possibility. And then he said, uh, if you have proof of God's non-existence and that material reality is all that exists, I'd love to hear it. And yes, it is pointless to argue, 
which is why I am not arguing, but I will state my point of view. <laughs> it's so funny. All right, I said an argument is just stating your point of view and giving reasons for it. That's what you are doing. It's just so ridiculous. He's denying that he's arguing on a thread where he's arguing. Anyway, then I said, yes, it is rational to dismiss a complex hypothesis that explains nothing. It is irrational to believe in such a hypothesis. It is irrational to believe in something based on faith or based on a fallacious argument, such as an appeal to consequences. I don't have absolute proof that the seven-headed pig doesn't exist, but that's not a reason to believe in the seven-headed pig. I never said material reality is all that exists. I believe that the laws of physics exist, in a sense, but they are not material. Then he said, I have already told you that I am not arguing. So now he's arguing about whether he's arguing. I am not asserting who is right or wrong, but it is a metaphysical belief to say that no such thing as a god can exist, and it cannot be proven with material observations your opinion is no less absurd. And I said, yes, you said that you are not arguing, but clearly you are, lol. It's silly to deny it. I have explained why belief in God is irrational. Atheism and theism are not equally reasonable positions. Atheism is rational, and theism is irrational. No claim about reality can be proven logically. We acquire knowledge of reality by induction, not deduction. I can't prove that there isn't a pink elephant in this room right now, but there are very good reasons not to believe that there is. See Reply to Eyes Wide Open for an explanation of how the notion of God is absurd. So it's kind of like morality, like objective value. The notion of a god that is like us, has like a will, has a purpose and all that, is really an incoherent notion. The notion of will only makes sense if you are a, a tiny part of a bigger universe. So you're trying to impose your will on the bigger universe. But if you're omnipotent, the concept of will is meaningless. So the, the idea of god is conceptually absurd. And it could be dismissed purely on, on those grounds, that it is conceptually absurd. All right, here is a comment on Reply to Iranian Dude, some, by somebody with a Japanese name. And I guess it's probably a guy, although his profile pic is an anime girl, but usually that means it's a guy. I don't know. I'll assume it's a guy. He said, are we all just particles drifting through the void? And I said, that's one way to look at it. However, it's a very poetic and not very accurate way of thinking about it. Because we're very strange particles, you know? We're a strange type of order that emerged in the universe um, by a feedback loop. And... Uh, we're not just drifting through the void. We're actually doing stuff. So anyway, all right, I'm going to read his channel description because it's kind of poetic. All right, here it is. Walking footsteps on rainy pavement. Gyoza smells nice on warm summer nights. Shinkansen, take me anywhere, please. Neon nights. Late dates and smiling eyes. Happiness through a beer bottle. Shrine days and cold sky. Lost connections through a saddened computer screen. In a quiet corner, I watch the world. I thought that was very poetic, so I wanted to read it. All right. Um, here is a comment by Midface on Reply to Iranian Dude. He said, why does it matter? 
I thought you didn't believe in morality. So same kind of thing. <laughs> uh, I said, why does what matter? You're probably confusing personal values, what I want, with moral values. I have values, but they're from my perspective. E.g., I value reproducing. So I had kids. However, I really don't know what point you think you're making. Then he said, if morality doesn't exist, then why do you care about human well-being? What value do any of you arbitrary values have? What a bizarre, <laughs> bizarre question. Uh, it's very strangely worded. Uh, all right, then I said, when did I say anything about human well-being? I think you're confused. Value doesn't exist objectively. Value is projected onto objectivity by a subject. Value exists to the valuer. If I value X, then X has value to me. And then he said, so you just arbitrarily decide the value of things? Is rioting okay just because I agree with it? And I said, there is no value to things independent of a valuer. Value isn't a substance that exists in objective reality. It's an attitude of a subject toward something. E.g., if you want rioting, then rioting has value to you. If I don't want rioting, then rioting has negative value to me. Is that hard to understand? And then he said, you are just coming up with reasons to oppress women and other minorities. Otherwise, you would agree morality is objective to further your biases. <laughs> anyway, it, it went on, but there's not much point reading it. It's just kind of funny. At some point, he put up a video poning me, but that video is gone now. That's too bad. He has one subscriber. Hmm. Anyway, all right. Uh, let's see. Here is a comment by GM for the people on talking about TRP with EFR. He said, is this the most incisive critique yet of TRP? Either way, it may stand unchallenged for some time as it was cunningly released the day after the author bravely voyaged into the offline space. And then I replied, not sure what you're talking about, but no, the best critique was the one I made more than two years ago. I said that in the intro and linked to it. This is just a discussion with someone who thought he could make counter arguments against that critique. Okay, here is one by Plancy Acanthaster. I think that's the crown of thorns starfish. Acanthaster Plancy. He said, have you ever thought of doing a stream with Distributist where you talk culture and history? I said, I would like to do that, but I don't think he would. You could suggest it to him. Other people have asked him to discuss slash debate atheism and theism with me, and I have offered to do it, but he has not accepted those offers. Yeah, most of these people will not get into a debate unless they're very sure of the opponent's position, their position, what their arguments are. It's really more of a performance. It's not a real debate. That's the unfortunate truth about most of these things. Okay, here is a comment by Aurora. Now, is this a guy or a girl? It's probably a guy, but maybe it's a girl. I don't know. I'll just use the masculine pronoun. He said, how old were you when you had your first and second child? And how old was your wife? I said, we were both in our early 20s. And he said, were you married? And I said, no, we got legally married later after our first two kids. And he said, ah, I see. Thank you. Yeah, 
and we looked very young too. Like people would think we were teenage parents and stuff, even though we weren't. And yeah, it was tough because you know I was supporting us, and it was a tough transition from being you know the having the freedom of of youth to the responsibilities of parenthood. But、uh, it was also a great time. It's great to be a young parent. It was tough, but it was also that、well, was part of life's adventure. And, and you got to just do these things, and then take the consequences. You know, like if you want everything to be perfect before you do something, you're never going to do it. So we just did it. We took the plunge. We had a child, and、uh, yeah, no regrets. Okay, and I think this is the last one before I get into comments I have already responded to before. This is by Yoso on how I became a moral. He said, "There's a good chance me is just an illusion as well. No me to be moral, good or bad, however the story may go. There appears to be that which is being presented. Everything else, just a story." And Foxy Grandpa replied, saying, "Nice Sam Harris copy pasta, Lamau." So I guess it's a Sam Harris quote, and it's one of my pet peeves. The self is an illusion. I really can't stand that because it's kind of dumb. It's presented as some profound statement, but it's actually just dumb. So anyway, I said, "An illusion can only exist to a subject who experiences it." The concept of an illusion presupposes subject, object, and representation, because an illusion is a false representation of the object, right? It's like you see something and it appears a certain way, but but you know that it's actually different, or we believe that it's something different. So it could be like the moon is so close I could reach up and touch it, but in fact the moon is you know thousands of kilometers away. And、uh, that presupposes the self that experiences the illusion, an experiencer, the illusion, which is some kind of mental representation of an object, and the object, which has properties that are not accurately represented. Right. Anyway, then I said, so the self is an illusion, is self-negating. There can be no illusion without a self. So it's just.、Um, Kind of a paradoxical statement, and then you could still say things like that, and and they could still be meaningful, but in some way. But most of the people who say this stuff are just repeating,、uh, you know, and they're just trying to pretend to be smart by repeating these pseudo profundities that they got from somebody else. And in this case, it was Sam Harris. And Sam Harris is a good example of a pseudo intellectual. He's not that stupid, but he's not that smart. And he's really not saying anything profound, and he went totally insane over Trump. So yeah, okay, I made it all the way back. Jesus, it was a long trek. So I'm going to end it there. And as always, thanks for listening.